Friend Hound Dog, good afternoon. This is Ben Llewellyn, and today I'm answering one of your questions about place names in Northern Scotland to do with the Pictish people and the Brythonic or British Old Welsh peoples. Before we get going, this video goes out to Dave Watson. About three, three, four months ago, you asked this question. Could you do something about Brythonic Pictish place names in Scotland from Aberdeen to Monarch Moor on Lewis, please? Yes, I can, and this video is for you. Now, about going onto the Isle of Lewis and all that, there's not much there. Monarch does in my opinion, come from a Pictish source, as I'll show you in this video. But this is certainly focusing on the northeast and east of the country of Scotland, where there was significant Pictish presence for many, many centuries. A disclaimer, I'm not Scottish. I'm not going to pronounce all of these names correctly. So let's jump into the video. So what is Pictish? For many, many years there were debates about which language family it belonged to because we don't have any written sources or texts by the people themselves or anything in their own language. We just have a few vague references around them talking about these people and some lists, names of kings who ruled over this land. We are fairly certain now this was a P-Celtic language related to Welsh, Cornish, Breton. Just a quick note on P-Celtic and Q-Celtic. So the word for four in Welsh would be Pedwar. And in Irish, a Cahar or Cahar. That C and P divided at one point, and Pictish certainly appears to have gone down the P route. So a lot of words in Celtic, we believe, began with W sound. A W, basically. In Welsh, this has become gwa or ga. In Irish, this has become fa or fa sound. But in Pictish, this was kept, we think, in an oo sound. So like that list of kings I mentioned, we have this name, Urgust. But look how this changes in Welsh and Irish. In Gaelic, this became Furgus. And in Welsh, this became Gurgaint, which eventually became Gurgaint. And that original element in all three of those means a man. Well, in Welsh, it's become more of a husband, a man of distinction, Gur. But one issue and a big complexity with looking at Pictish is it was assimilated into the Scots Gaelic speaking culture. So we don't really know when we're looking at Pictish origin words a lot of the time and when we're looking at Scots Gaelic. But just looking at Scots Gaelic myself, learning a bit of it, for me as a Welsh speaker, having dabbled in Irish, Scots Gaelic is far more simple and far more Welsh, and that seems to me the influence of Pictish upon it. And keep that in mind when we look at certain types of mountains in Pictish here. There are four main categories of place names in Scotland, according to Mr. Taylor there. And that's the analogy that I'm going to use. So Aber, of course, is one that you're going to be very familiar with if you have looked at a map of Scotland at all. Aberdeen. That's obviously the biggest one. Aberdour. Abergeldi. Aberdonna. Aberarder. And interestingly, Arbroath, which is a significant point or place in Scottish history, came from Aber as well. It came from Aberbrothog or Aberbrothog. The river, the confluence of the river Brothok, Aberlemno, like this stone here, where it's found. Aberarchy, in the parish of Abernethy. 
and to me living near a place in Wales called Nev, which is the name of the river, that's eerie because that's just basically the estuary of the Nev to me, Abernethy. And there's a place in Scotland called Tapo North. And I looked up what this was and it made me think of a Welsh word tap or tap, which means a projection, a, a shelf, a ledge of rock up high. It's, a, it's quite a dialect Welsh word, but I wondered, well, what does north mean? And I, I thought about that for a while, and when you have winnowings, like chippings, shavings, as you shave off wood, they kind of blow in the wind a little bit, don't they? And we call those Nathion in Welsh. Nath. Nath in Older Welsh. And this Tapo North seems to me like Tep. A nath, meaning the ledge of the winds, the winds, the the tumultuous winds almost. Now locals in that area say that it's more of the north means like an observation post. So maybe there's a Pictish word that we don't know, but that initial bit, tap or tap, seems like the Welsh word tap or tap. And I find that interesting that there's a name near it, Rene which we think comes from a word for king, and in Older Welsh, re is the word for a king. You see these words for Pictish and clusters, and one thing that I think is important to note is that there's far more of these Pictish names there than you get even in places right up against the Welsh border in England. This is significant. There's a lot of these names. These people were there for a long time and left a deep imprint upon it. So let's move on to the next category of those names. Ket. You get this in name Keith. In the Murray area, there's a town named Keith. I'd like to visit that Murray area. It'd be very beautiful, I think. Cooper. This is a confluence again. And you get Meek, which is a bog, a marsh. In Welsh, you get Megan, which is the same thing. Meganev means gnats, little annoying biting insects that come out of the Meg. And Perth, meaning Perth, it comes from the same root as Welsh. In Welsh, it's a hedge, but in Pictish, it's more of a, a wood or a, a grove. And here's a map of those located around Scotland. You can see here that they're quite distributed and even, which makes sense to me as a Welsh speaker. And the Meg one that I mentioned, this changed a bit. You get other words which are similar. Megle. Or Migdel. So let's look at two place names, Midstraf and Beers. So Midstraf comes from Mig, that, that boggy, marshy bit, coupled with Straf. And Straf, some people tend to assume that it comes from Irish, but I immediately think of Welsh Ystrad, like the kingdom that was in Scotland, Ystrad Clyde, which means kind of a, a wide valley. And in Cornish, you get Stras, which means a flat valley. This area completely fits that description, but go up from Midstrat, you get Bras, Beerus rather, which comes from Bras. When languages change, Sometimes the vowels and the consonants flip because people have different emphasis on words in their own language when they're learning another language. Brass became beers. And this is in a very hollow meadowy area, grassy area, up from the, the watery bit. And this makes me think of Cornish again. The word for a meadow in Cornish is brass. Cornish is just as prothonic and kept a lot of conservative things that would have held on longer because Welsh actually has changed quite a bit. So here we have a word for meadow and a word for flat valley that are almost identical between Cornish and Pictish. And that just shows how similar it is 
to the other Brythonic languages further south. The second category are words borrowed in to Scots Gaelic from Pictish or British that we only really have through place names. So some of those that we're pretty sure. Caer, Car, which in Welsh, Caer, and Cardin, which would be a fort, an encampment. So remember what I said about the P in Q Celtic? You have King Cardin, which is basically the fort at the head of the enclosure, right? The first element coming from Gaelic, Kien, head. So the third category kind of branches off the second is Pictish or British loanwords attested in Scottish Gaelic as common nouns. Right, so suggestions that these words are Pictish that we can kind of assess, oh well, that's what that word was in Pictish. Because we don't have these in Irish really, and we're like, well, where did this come from? And if we look at Welsh or Cornish, there's usually a similar word, very closely related, if not identical, for them. Dal, which is a hoch or a water meadow. And this is interesting for terms of meadow. Remember what I said earlier? The word for meadow in Welsh is dal. So Dalsic, the place name in Scotland, that's what that comes from, the first element at least. For Dave who suggested this video, Monath, this clearly comes in my opinion from Monith, but it means in Scots Gaelic more of a hill, a hill range, right? Rather than an individual one. See when things go between languages, they keep a similar meaning often, but they change meaning in terms of the subtle meanings. One that I found interesting was por, which is seed, like grain, harvest. Because in Welsh, pori means to graze, to feed on. Pet is kind of a category in its own right. It's a land holding, a farm, and we don't have anything quite like this in Welsh because ferm, we borrowed it quite early and this, we may have had something similar a long, long time ago that we lost, but Pictish kept it. And you get legal notes in the Book of Deer in Scots Gaelic that, that mention these place names because they're owned by people who their ancestors going back would have spoken Pictish. Chloic Pete. McGarnight, the stone of the son of Garnight, Pet McGobraig, that bit of the son of Gobraich, Pet Maldu, of Maldu, Pet in Mullen, that of the mill. These keep cropping up over and over, all over northeast Scotland. Pit Gordon, interestingly, is in the is in the parish of Strath Meeklaw. So there's there's Pictish all over that one. Pit Namun, Pit Gur, Pit Castle, Pit Gowan. Oh, Pit Gowan. Pit Gowan. That's that just sounds Welsh. It's beautiful. Pit Fitchy, Pit Capel, Pit Grudy, Pit Kindy. So you see, these are all over the place. Just the farm holding of. And it suggests that these people were very agricultural. I don't think these people were as warlike as legend would have. This and where these place names are along these valleys. And you get Monath beyond those, right? Above. And Pen as well, meaning the head of. Monath. Monath Liav, which is the Grey Mountains. Now, they say, well, this comes from Scots Gaelic, but that doesn't seem to for me. It seems more like it came from British, which broke up into Pictish, and then Scotic Gaelic came in and kind of changed it a bit. Because in Welsh, this mountains, these mountains would be Monath 
or a monitor fluid. And Monab Ruab, this is like further south you get Penrith, which is Penrith, ruddy head, the ruddy mountains. And Monab Ruab, that's the Cairngorms in Scottish Gaelic. And to me that's just Welsh with a bit of Scots Gaelic tagged on. And I think, frankly, many, many, many of these names that we think come from Scots Gaelic are really just assimilated from Pictish. And sometimes only historical context can tell us whether a name was Pictish in origin or Scots Gaelic in origin, because it's a very blurry line there between those two cultures that have kind of fused into one, really. Category four, false friends, meaning that you have a word that looks Scots Gaelic, but it's used in a very different way than what it is in Ireland. And this strath or strath is one of those. So Irish strath is grassland. Yeah. However, in Scotland, its chief meaning is a broad valley, right? Strathmore, strathern, like its Welsh cognate, a strath. Cornish straf, the same word. And within this you get fetter names. And what do I mean by that? They contain Gaelic foyhir, which is usually translated as a slope or a terraced declivity. But it occurs in a lot of high status names in former Pictland. What do I mean by high status? Names where there were administrative centers or castles or defensive key positions later on in Scottish history. Donotar, that beautiful castle. Fetter Angus, Fetter Cairn, Fetter Esso, Fetter Nair, Fort Aviot, Kenadur. You get it. These are all medieval parishes. You're saying, well, medieval, that's kind of way after. But Historical context is important because when people move in or take power, they don't usually just abolish what was there before. Caered in the capital of Scotland, Edinburgh, is built upon an old Welsh settlement. People just keep building on what was there because if the first people who moved in chose that place, it's usually a good place. If you had the whole selection of the land to yourself, you wouldn't choose the scrappy bit, would you? Thought here is made up of two elements in Scots Gaelic. Thor meaning under, and tier meaning land, which is familiar to any Welsh speaker. Again, tier means land. But in Welsh it's a go. Again, that g f that I spoke of earlier, how Irish and Welsh, their two branches diverged. But what happened in Pictish is it didn't attach that G or the F. It was its own thing. So in Welsh, Godir slowly became Gwydir, the name of a fine estate in Siriconwy and a few other nice places. This was usually, these type of words were connected to a medieval administration. And in Pictish, it appears to have been Uotir, more like the Welsh wee bit. But as it was being Gaelicized, the F from Scots Gaelic was attached to it. And if you look at where these are, this seems to be like administrative centers of a Pictish kingdom here. Well, everyone, and Dave, thank you very much for that suggestion. I hope that suffices for a video on Pictish and Brythonic place names for you. But it was a fascinating thing to look at and read about. So thank you for suggesting it. And here are my Patreons on the screen now for anyone who would like to contribute and help us get this channel going up to a full-time enterprise. We're on the way because of your help. And thank you very much for watching. We will see you in the next episode.